Cool. Hi, Dan. Hey, how you doing? Really enjoyed the presentation yesterday. Thank you. Um, coming as a, <laughs> so I guess I'll, I'll explain a bit. Um, I'm not a journalist. <laughs> Don't usually do interviews, and um, I'm a content creator now. Yep. Except I actually I studied engineering. I have a bachelor's in engineering, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm all into the tech behind things. Yep. And now I've kind of been thrown into this world of content production and media and video editing and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it was really it was really cool hearing uh, your presentation yesterday, explaining the the more nitty gritty about how these projects actually come to life. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's amazing like how far technology has come now, and the the line between reality and fiction is being blurred constantly and it it's, is. it's just it's just amazing um, so I guess uh, my first question would be what's your favorite part of working on a project like this being able to uh, tell a story and have access to these tools to be able to really do whatever you want kind of yeah I mean <coughs> I, I think the end goal was, was the favorite bit you know like yeah. I, I you know like when I made my own little films you know I was, I was driven by the idea that I wanted to you know I wanted to tell a little story and so so getting there you know uh, the idea of getting there always kept me going you know and so it's amazing to be a part of these you know these 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 bigger you know these bigger productions films yeah. that have been written by professionals and you know played <laughs> by professionals and uh, it's it's fantastic to be a part of that you know so I think I, I think I love animating I just love it you know yeah. but but for me the the real the joy of, of animation is when someone else sees it you know when someone Definitely. else sees what you've managed to yeah. do so that's what all about. That's <laughs> what it's about, you know, and that's what drives you on. So I guess, you know, finishing it is my favourite part, you know. Um, but that's only because other people get to see it, not so much that it means I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. Mm. So can you tell us what's your next project? Or I actually don't know. I don't know. I don't know what my next project is. No, I, I'm not sure. I'm taking a little bit of a break. You know, but I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm still at work. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but I'm kind of dialing it back a wee bit. You know, these things can, you know, it can take a wee bit out of you. And it's nice if you don't sort of roll directly into the next thing. So exactly. There are things on the horizon, and we'll just see... Uh, you know, where people want to deploy me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I got this little fact sheet about some of the, the VFX used in War for the Planet Apes. Sure. And uh, the one program that kind of caught my eye was uh, Totara. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about I that? I can't really tell you too much no. about that. No, I can't. No, <laughs> it's probably um, it's probably more of a. Um, I mean, I I know what it does, but uh, but I but I shouldn't really go in depth on okay. that. You know, it's probably a Dan or a Joe thing. I think. <laughs> um, but um, you know, certainly, I, I know that it's a tool that saves us a lot of work because yeah. uh, you know we used to do that manually. You know, so yeah, uh, yeah it's, that, yeah, it's a tool that makes me happy, but not one I should really talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you get your start? Accidentally, yeah. I um, I kind of studied uh, started late. You know, I I I went to, you know, it, when I was at secondary school, I always wanted to go to art school. You know, I was going to be a painter, but when I got to art school, I thought that sculpture was the thing. You know, okay. for me, and so I, so I did that, and I worked as a sculptor for a, for a few years, and then I ended up working for a sculptor, and and after a while, decided I had to do something for myself. You know, some way that maybe I could get paid using you know my <laughs> my sort of artistic Sorry, chops. Challenge. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I went back to um went back to college and um and studied graphic design and uh, flash animation was the big thing back then you know oh, okay. you still see it occasionally but yeah. it was everywhere back then and yeah. uh, so that's how I got into animation just absolutely loved it as soon as I saw it I thought this is what, this is what I want to do you know and so um, the tutor said have you seen the 3D stuff and yeah. no I have not and uh, he took me um, to a room a darkened room with uh, you know six fellows sitting in the dark around their computers and that was um, I think that was it might have been Lightwave could have been 3D Studio Max. Anyway, I knew that was exactly yeah. what I wanted to do. I dropped out of the course I was in that day. And, uh, wow. Yeah, so it was, it was um, I was, you know, I was 28, 29, and I knew I couldn't mess around. So, um, yeah. yeah, I made the decision there and then. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what's been your favorite project you've ever worked on? Or is it always like, whichever one you're working on right now? Like <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of that. I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, I have such history now with the Apes films, so I think yeah. that I would have to say that they would be right up there. Yep. Um, I'm proud of war, so maybe let's say war. But I mean, th there are other films I've worked on that you know that I'm that I'm that, that have been fantastic moments in cinema history. Avatar, for instance, was a big thing to be a part of. You know, yep. that was that was um, that that was a. Do you think a, you might work on the next one? Oh, I think it would be hard to dodge it, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, I think it was you know that was a that was quite a quite a moment, and um, and it's it's something that I'm proud to have been a part of. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, and I love these apes, you know, and I love the. I love the nature of the films that have been made around these apes. You know, I yeah. think that um, that's such an emphasis on you know story and character that kind of really works for me. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I love to animate, but um, but I also you know I enjoy a, a good story with a, with a little depth. And mm -hmm. I think that um, I think these these films have done that. You know, and I think that War certainly does that. 
So now as a supervisor, how much, how much do you get your hands dirty still with the actual animator or anymore? No, not at all. Well, well that's not true. Beginning and the end. Yep. You know, at the beginning, there's testing to be done, especially face rigs, you know, yep. and so I like to get my, my hands dirty with the rigs. It, it, I think for a supervisor, you need to be pretty au fait with the rigs if you're going to mm -hmm. give notes. So, um, and, and you're also working with the modelers who are building these incredible rigs, and so um, it's it's a bit of a two-way process. So in there, and then and then I was at the end when, it, when you know, most of the team's left, and it's kind of <laughs> you left there holding the baby, you know, and uh, um, there, there's always a few of us left at the end kind of. So it, it tends to be more clean up for me then. But, yeah, um, yeah I don't... I, know, I, I call myself an animator still, you know, okay. I, I still do, but, awesome. um, but it, it's not, I don't have a huge amount of it. One day, one yeah. day, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was really neat yesterday getting to play with the, the face rigs mm -hmm. and the cam and the whole, the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah. Um, just amazing how far the software has come, mm -hmm. like all the different, um, I forget the term for them, the, um, the points that you can change, the, right, the yeah. properties yeah. basically yeah. Yeah. that you've assigned to the face mm -hmm. and then it's just, it's literally a matter of going frame by frame and like yep. matching it up with. Yep, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, there's no quick way really yeah. of doing it. You know, I mean, we have we've got amazing tools and you know things have certainly sped up for us over over the years in terms of interactivity in the within our three D scenes. You know, so yeah. it's 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 quicker to do it, but um, but there's no quick way of doing it really. You know, <laughs> no. it's, there's a lot of pouring over reference and uh, and a lot of um, you know kind of careful reconstruction of of um, performances. Yeah, mm. I know the other Dan was telling me. If you were to take a really powerful computer to render the entire movie, you would have had to start back when the Egyptians were around. It's like something <laughs> like that. It's pretty <laughs> scary stuff. It's, yeah. it's yeah. amazing. And yeah. um, as computers continue to advance, it's just mm -hmm. going to start making it easy. Well, the funny thing is, they'll make doing stuff like this easier, but we're always going to be pushing the envelope and going even farther. Yeah. So it's like, when are we going to hit that point where like, all right, this is the best it can ever be. Like, I know, I now know. the computers can become this much powerful and it's it's easy now to yeah. make a movie like that. Yeah. So it'll be really interesting when that moment happens. It will be. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm yet to see it. You know, like, yeah. as you say, every year we get given a, a new box that's, you know, got these fantastic new specs on it. And then we end up, you know, just, just upping the tech and upping the kind of expectations of that box, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, we, we have actually, you know, to be fair, we've made some huge strides, you know, with, with speed on, on, on our puppets and things. And so it's definitely been, you know, over the last couple of years, it's been a happy time for the animators, you know. Yep. <laughs> um, because, you know, interactivity is everything for an animator. You don't, no, no one frame means anything unless you see it in relation to the surrounding frames. So, so you need to be able to, um, you know, scrub through a scene and mm -hmm. see, see what the motion looks like. So, yeah. I know even with my videos sometimes, like, my computer just lags. I'm yeah. just editing oh, normal just, footage, yeah. let alone trying to render yeah. something or yeah. adding effects and yeah. whatnot. So That's how you know how frustrating it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I dabbled in rotoscoping about right. 10 years ago. Yeah. I did a, a short uh, lightsaber test scene. Oh, cool. This is a very yeah. classic, classic thing to yeah. try out. But um, <laughs> I kind of shot myself in the foot. I filmed, like, five minutes right. for some reason, yeah. me waving around a yeah. lightsaber stick when I, I could have done like 30 seconds right. and the same result yeah. but like I got into it and I'm like oh, might as well finish the whole scene <laughs> and um, yeah, that, yeah that was what introduced me first to keyframes and like right yeah um, the editing software and how it can like interpret in between mm -hmm. I, I thought that was really neat yeah. how you can say okay at frame one this happens at frame 30 this happens mm -hmm. and if it's a linear speed in between the two yeah the computer does the work for you yep. and I thought that was yep. really cool and seeing that again with the the um, face rigs yesterday, mm -hmm. same idea, just a yeah. hundred times more complex. Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> no, it's absolutely it's the crazy. way it works. I mean, I guess that, you know, certainly when you're blocking a shot, you can lay key poses and, and, you'll, and you'll get interpolation between those. But ultimately, on most, you know, most animation scenes you look at, there'll be a key on every frame, you know, yeah. or at least just something, you know, <laughs> keyed on every frame. The facial stuff, um, it, it tends to happen, you know, like you, you, you kind of, you have to remove that computer interpolation from it as much as you can. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of hand keying. Mm. Uh, what do you think about VR and the, the future implications I'm of that? Terrified. Movies? Yeah, terrified. <laughs> no personal work. <laughs> personally, I'm terrified. Well, there's a lot of work. You know, I mean, we've worked on a bit of that stuff. You know, and when when you allow someone to look e everywhere, when you can't guide the gaze, you know, you have yeah. to be quite prepared for that. I mean, that that uh, talk about rendering. You have to render whole worlds. You know, yeah. but um, but personally, I find it terrifying just because uh, I I think it's going to suck me in. I think <laughs> I, I had an experience recently where I where I, um, it was very basic graphics and I was just having this thing and I was in a kitchen and I turned on a tap and I turned this tap on in the kitchen and then I, what did I do? I went somewhere else but then I realized that I'd, before I had to get out of the VR kit 
but I had to go back and turn the tap off before I left because it was playing <laughs> on my mind too much. <laughs> so, yeah, I think my mind is kind of susceptible to that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, like, with the future of the possibility of VR movies, basically, the first ones are obviously going to be CGI because mm -hmm. traditional movies, you can hide everything in cuts between yeah. scenes. But yeah. No longer would you be able to do that in yeah. VR. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you'd have a it would be a more cheaper feel where it's mm -hmm. just like, oh, now you're over here watching this scene. Yeah. Um, and for the actors to you'd have to do basically a one take yeah, yeah. with however many cameras mm -hmm. <laughs> in that room, mm -hmm. but whereas CGI, you can render it from any direction yeah, you want. It's much easier to and do that. Um, yeah. yeah. The, 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 obviously, the disadvantage is you don't have a world pre-built for you to put your cameras in, you know. Yeah. So when you when you have to do the whole lot, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it becomes pretty onerous. Yeah. Mm. Do you think there's any possibility the Avatar movies might be heading that way? Or? I'm not sure. I don't know what his plans. So, I mean, like, I mean, I think you know Jim Cameron traditionally has been someone who who likes to you know he Pushing likes to push the envelope. Absolutely, yeah. you know, it's one of the things we all love about him. So. Yeah. Um, so, but I, yeah, I don't I don't know his plans. It's sort of um, you know it's rumbling away, but um, yeah, I'm not sure uh, w you know what's what's going to happen there. Yeah. Mm. So it's funny, actually, uh, before I quit my job to do YouTube full-time, I was actually a product developer at Chris Digital, mm -hmm. which is one of the, the really big uh, projector companies, mm -hmm. also pushing the envelope yeah. with uh, the projectors and whatnot. And I know uh, they had a pretty good relationship with James Cameron because when he was producing Avatar, mm -hmm. getting that high frame rate and whatnot, yeah. and some of the Christie projectors were some of the first ones Raw able high, to actually yeah. do stuff like that. Awesome. And uh, it's a really neat experience working with that. And it's kind of funny how everything comes together, and it's just... Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is. And yeah, he's, uh, you know, he doesn't back away from a challenge. No. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Really excited to see where the next ones go. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's all I have. Yeah. Very cool. Great. Awesome, awesome man. Thank, well, you, very thank much. you very much. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming down, too. Yeah. It's a long it's way to